buying buying a stock uh, is is a far more complicated activity than most people seem to think. So what's happened with the development of markets is on a smartphone or a tablet or a laptop, we can in seconds buy one of thousands of companies. And uh, there's no effort required to buy a stock, no effort required to sell a stock. But uh, in order to do well, one really needs to understand the underlying business and to have a point of view on kind of where that is versus the, the market capitalization. Monish Pabrai is the founder and managing partner of Pabrai Investment Funds, which manages over $1 billion in assets. So when Pabrai talks, investors listen. In a super insightful interview, Pabrai revealed how you can potentially crush the market with over a thousand percent growth in your portfolio. Sounds wild, right? But it's not just hype. These are tried and true strategies from one of the best in the game. In this video, I'm going to dive deep into the valuable insights from Pabrai's interview. Together, we'll explore how he thinks about investments, the tactics he uses, and the things he avoids when making the perfect investment. What's more, I'm going to reveal his ultimate checklist for finding the perfect stock. Imagine having a cheat sheet straight from a billionaire investor. Now that's interesting, right? Okay, so before moving on to Monish Pabrai's interview, here's a little request. If you're loving our content, make sure to hit that subscribe button on Investing Machine and smash the bell icon. All right, enough with the teasers. Let's get into it. Here are the top investment tips from Monish Pabrai that could transform your portfolio. 1. Focus on the market cap, not just the price per share. Many times in the US, like I'll go to my health club, for example, and one of the members will ask me, hey, Monish, uh, should I buy Apple? Should I buy Apple stock? And I turn the question around to them. I say, uh, hey, John, what's the market cap of Apple? And they look at me with a puzzled look. They said, the stock is at 170. I said, no, no, what is the market capitalization? And they don't know. OK, so the first thing, if you're going to buy, if you're going to go buy some rice in the market, you're going to know what is the price per kilogram. So the first thing is that if you're going to buy a stock, at least know what you can buy the whole company for. A lot of investors don't have this basic piece of knowledge. They see a stock price and think they've got the full picture. But Pabrai emphasizes that understanding the market cap is crucial. It's the first thing you should ask yourself before even considering the stock price. OK, so I know it's a bit of a head scratcher. Let's try to understand it with an example. Imagine you're at a car dealership. You wouldn't just look at the price of a tire and decide to buy the car based on that, right? You'd want to know the total price of the car. The same logic applies here. Knowing the market cap helps you see if a company is undervalued or overvalued. It gives you a sense of the company's size, potential for growth, and overall stability. So next time you're thinking about investing in a stock, take a step back. Don't just get mesmerized by the share price. Look at the market cap and understand what you're really buying into. This simple shift in perspective can make a huge difference in your investment decisions. Two, the importance of circle of competence. And most investors don't have that knowledge, which is amazing. And so the first, the first thing an investor ought to ask themselves before they buy a stock, uh, even before we get to price and so on, is, is this within my circle of competence? Now, circle of competence is a very important concept, one of the most important concepts in investing. This one is all about knowing your limits and playing to your strength. So here's what I mean. Pabrai stresses that you need to ask yourself, is this within my circle of competence? Basically, your circle of competence is what you know well. The industries, businesses, and markets you understand deeply. And this concept isn't just for beginners. It's one of the core principles of investing, adopted by investing legends like Warren Buffett. So what does this mean for you? It means you shouldn't feel pressured to invest in something just because it's popular or hyped. Stick to what you know. If you're into tech and understand the ins and outs of that industry, focus your investments there. If you're more comfortable with cryptocurrency, then that's your playground. Investing outside of your circle of competence can be risky. 
you might not fully grasp the market dynamics, the competition, or the potential pitfalls. This could lead to poor investment decisions and unnecessary losses. Think of it like playing a sport. If you're a great basketball player, you wouldn't suddenly switch to playing professional tennis and expect to win, right? You'd stick to basketball where your skills and knowledge give you an edge. The same goes for investing. Play to your strengths and don't venture too far outside your expertise. Three, avoid stop loss. Don't panic. If I had engaged in stop losses, uh, rain went down to 40, even went down to 35 after I finished buying, mm -hmm. and I did nothing. And so now rain is north of, I don't know, 360 rupees. And so that whole opportunity would have been gone. It would have been no sense for me to put a stop loss at 30 or 35 or 40 because I thought it was worth a lot more. Stop loss is an order to sell a stock when it drops to a certain price, intended to limit an investor's loss. But Pabrai argues that this approach doesn't make sense for long-term investors. Imagine you bought gold for a fair price and intended to hold it for the long term. If the price dropped slightly after a few months, you wouldn't rush to sell it at a loss, right? You'd hold on because you believe in its long-term value. The same principle applies to stocks. If you've done your homework and bought a stock because you believe it's undervalued and has strong long-term potential, then short-term dips shouldn't scare you into selling. Pabrai shares his experience with Rain Industries to give an example. He bought the stock at around 30 rupees or 36 US cents, and it initially went up to 45 rupees or 54 US cents. But then it dropped back down to 35 rupees or 42 cents. If he had set a stop loss, he would have sold it at a loss. Instead, he held on, believing in the company's long-term value and because he knew about the business. He understood the business so he kept faith in his investment. Today, that stock is worth more than 360 rupees or $4.31. So the takeaway here is clear. Don't let short-term market fluctuations dictate your investment decisions. If you're confident in your analysis and the stock is within your circle of competence, stick to your decision. Avoid using stop-loss orders as a crutch and trust your long-term perspective. Four. Do not underestimate undervalued stocks. A map you are definitely better off buying a growing company over a cheap, no growth company. Imagine you find a stock priced at $5, but its true value is $10. Now it's true that if you buy it, you stand to make a nice profit once the market realizes its actual worth. But here's the thing, if the company has limited growth, your gains are capped at that $5 difference. Now, let's consider another scenario. You come across a company that's not only undervalued, but also has strong growth drivers, excellent management, and tailwinds pushing its industry forward. Even if you pay a bit more for such a company, your potential returns could be significantly higher in the long run. This is because as the company grows, its value keeps increasing, leading to compounded returns over time. Okay, so here's another much simpler example for you to understand what I mean. Think of it like planting two trees. One is a small, cheap sapling that won't grow much, while the other is a slightly more expensive but fast-growing tree. The first tree will give you some shade, but the second one will eventually become a giant, providing abundant shade and perhaps even fruit. Investing in a growing company is like nurturing that second tree. It all comes down to balancing value and growth. An undervalued stock with limited growth might offer a decent return, but an undervalued stock with strong growth potential can offer exceptional returns. 5. Pabrai's Checklist While Buying a Stock so, Pabrai discussed what one should consider while choosing a stock to buy. Spoiler alert, it's all about keeping things simple and obvious. First off, Pabrai has a pretty unique approach to picking stocks. He needs the idea to practically scream at him, buy me. That's how clear and obvious the stock's potential should be to Pabrai. Until he feels that strong, he won't even consider it. Next up, if you have to open Excel to analyze the stock, it's an automatic rejection. That's right, no complex spreadsheets or intricate calculations. 
If the investment thesis isn't straightforward enough to understand without a deep dive into the numbers, it's a pass. This simplicity ensures that you only invest in businesses you truly understand. Next, he uses what I like to call the kid test. If he can't explain the investment idea to a seven-year-old in two or three minutes, it's a no-go. This might sound a bit extreme, but if you can't break it down into simple terms, maybe it's not as solid as it seems. And finally, Pabrai insists that the idea should be painfully obvious even to the village idiot. This isn't about being derogatory, it's about emphasizing clarity. The potential of the stock should be so evident that anyone can see it. This helps avoid overly complicated investments that might be hiding risks or uncertainties. So, now that you have the complete recipe for perfect stock investment, take that first step and begin your investment journey with these valuable investment tips in mind. And if, by any chance, you're well aware of the crypto market, it might just be the right time to invest in crypto. Watch our next video on the latest Bitcoin price prediction by Lynn Alden. If you learned something from this video and want more insightful videos like this one, make sure to leave a like and tell us in the comments below what we should cover next in our videos. Until then, we will take our leave, and we'll see you soon in another video.